Ready to learn how to create your timesheet? Let's get started. Click on the Timesheets desktop. Start your timesheet by clicking Add Timesheet. Select your employee name. Next, select the pay period of your timesheet. If you do not see your current pay period, you will need to contact your supervisor or you may want to review the existing timesheets to see if you have already started one against the pay period. Once you have saved those items, you will see the timesheet of your current pay period on the left hand side. Click on it to begin adding your time. You will have the ability to add both billable and non-billable time. If you are using the system to enter your notes, then your company will most likely have made the determination that you can only add your billable time by importing the notes to the timesheet. This ensures that what you are being paid for ties directly back to your documentation and the hours of service delivery provided. You may also have the option to import schedule time into the timesheet and is a setting that your company is allowed to configure. Let's look at how to bring your billable time generated from notes into the timesheet. Click on Import into Timesheet. You will see a listing of notes that have been approved for payroll. These are approved notes that have never been imported into a prior timesheet and also notes that don't go past the end date of your current pay period. In this case, I would see all notes approved for payroll that are prior to August 31st. Even though my beginning pay period date is August 1st, I am presented with a July note because it never got pulled into the July timesheet. The note may have not gotten approved for payroll in time for the July timesheet to be signed. Therefore, since I have never gotten paid for it, I am able to pull this note into my August timesheet. If you feel that you are missing notes from this list, be sure to check your notes to see if they've been approved for payroll. An easy way of doing so is by going to the Notes desktop. You will then use your filters to search for your unapproved notes. The Supervisor Payroll Approval filter will allow you to search for all unapproved for payroll notes. You would then contact your supervisor regarding any notes during your current pay period that you need to be able to pull into your timesheet. If you were importing scheduled items into the timesheet, you would take the same steps. After hitting Import into Timesheet, you would see an icon here for Schedule rather than Note and you would pull in the scheduled items in the exact same manner. Check on each item or use the top checkbox as Select All. Then click Import into Timesheet. You will then be able to review the total hours for each day. Notice that you also have total hours at the very bottom. When reviewing this time, if you realize that there is an error in your start time and end time, be mindful that you do not have the ability to change that on the timesheet. Since this came from a note, you have to correct the note. You do have the option to click the Edit Time Record button and view the note or to possibly add a task to send to your supervisor and notify them that the note needs to be unapproved so that you can make your correct edits. You also have the option when opening the time record to upload any pertinent documents that support this time. If it is necessary to add any additional time to your timesheet, such as non-billable time for trainings, mileage, etc., then you will click on the Add Time Record button. Input the date and select the time as either billable or non-billable. Be aware that your company may determine that you can only add in non-billable time and in that case you would not see the radio button for billable. 
This would mean that all billable time would have to be imported into the timesheet from the notes or from the schedule as we just reviewed. If you do have the option for billable, you will enter the client and select the service. If there is not an authorization to cover the date of service you need to enter, you will not be able to enter the time. All billable time must be covered by a valid auth. Contact your supervisor in that event. For non-billable time, you will select the pay type category that best suits your time entry. A couple of things to note. For mileage pay types, you will use the units field to enter in the number of miles to be reimbursed. For a reimbursement pay type, you will use the amount field to enter in the amount to be reimbursed. For most other pay type categories, you will enter in the start time and the end time to reflect the total hours to be paid. In all cases, you will have the option of selecting indirect or out of community. These boxes designate whether the time was provided in the office and whether it was indirectly with the client, meaning not face-to-face. -face. This is typically only necessary for billable time. You may also choose to hold pay the record if, for some reason, this time entry does not need to get paid. Lastly, you may enter in any comment to further define your time entry. After you save, just as you could with the billable time record, you can edit the time record by adding a task or uploading a DMS document. You may also edit the actual time in this case since this is non-billable time and the time is not linked back to any note. Once you have completed the entries for all billable and non-billable time, review your timesheet and verify your total hours. If you find that you need to remove any entries, click on the Delete icon. Notice the icons under the Type column. When hovering your mouse over the icon, a tooltip will notify you how the time was entered on the timesheet, whether it came from a note, a schedule, or manually enter time. A few other buttons to mention are found at the top of the timesheet. The Validate Timesheet button will present any warning messages that were displayed either when the notes were being signed or at the time that the timesheet is signed. This is usually most helpful when the supervisor is ready to approve the timesheet and would like to understand where any entries may be out of compliance before they approve the time. There are controls in security for what warning messages are allowed to be overridden. For example, if your security administrator does not allow any overlapping time, this timesheet will not be able to be signed until the overlapping time is taken care of. The Late Notes Report button will show notes that occurred before the date range of this timesheet, but are not found on any other timesheet. It will also display notes that occurred before or during the date range of this timesheet, but were signed after the end date of the pay period. An export timesheet allows you to print this report or to export into another file type. The very last step once all time is entered and verified is to sign the timesheet. Click the Sign button and enter in your password. This is the same password used to sign into the program. Warning messages will be provided if any of the time is out of compliance. Again, your security administrators have control over whether or not you can sign the timesheet when these messages are displayed. In this case, I am able to override the validations, which allows me to continue to sign my timesheet. The status of the timesheet moves from unsigned to signed. 
It is then up to the supervisor to approve the timesheet for payroll purposes. The supervisor will know to do so based on the signed status. For instructions on approving, please see the next video in the timesheet series. Should you have any questions, please contact our support department by going to Options, Support, and Contact Support. Enter in the nature of your questions and click Submit.